God, you threw the whole world a curveball when you showed us a kind of hope we'd never thought to look for. Born of poverty, between the walls of a rickety barn and into the fragile arms of a nervous young mom, Jesus arrived unable to defend himself, much less anyone else. We'd been hoping for security, and you gave us a baby. And then, the expectations kept being shattered. Jesus healed those who could do nothing for him. He handed out hope to people the world turned away. Jesus showed us a new way of life, a life that works from the inside out. Hope lives with us, then inside us, and moves from our hearts into the world. Jesus gave us hope beyond this life, hope no one else has to give, hope that shows up in a manger as a gift we don't deserve, but we gratefully receive. We call him Jesus. He is Emmanuel, God with us. Amen.
Merry Christmas, South Bay. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Though he was in the form of God, he did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself. By taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself. For God so loved the world that he gave us Jesus, and today we celebrate the unexpected gift, Emmanuel, God with us. Let's celebrate his wonder.
Yes, girl, yes. No, I'm at Pete's right now. I'm gonna grab me some coffee. I know, Starbucks is normally my place, but Pete's was closer and you know your girl has to get her caffeine by any means necessary. <laughs> yeah, I'm here, so let me get this and then I'll give you a call a little later, okay? All right, I'll talk to you later, bye. Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, it's so good to see you. What are you doing here? What are you doing at, hold on. Do you have a thing about coffee shops or something? I remember my girl Melissa told me she ran into you at Starbucks and there was a whole Jesus and caramel macchiato kind of thing going on. What are you doing here? I remember Melissa and Starbucks <laughs> and the caramel macchiato. Yes. But I'm not limited to, start to coffee shops. I am wherever my kids are open to me. But I'm here for a specific reason. Okay. I have an assignment for you. I want you to share your faith with someone I love. Um, are you sure? Me? Jesus, I mean, I've only been following you for a few months. There has to be somebody else more qualified than me to do this assignment. Lynn, it's not about your qualifications. It's not about how long you've been following me. It's about your willingness to be available. <sighs> If you are willing, I am here. And my spirit, my spirit will speak through you. Okay. All right. If you'll be with me, then I will do what you asked me to do. But your daughter's going to need some caffeine and some chocolate and some coffee. So can we get something like that going on at all? Good deal. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, he wants me to share my faith. My goodness. Two Oh my gosh. Two peppermint mochas. Two? With a shot of espresso. Yes. One for you and one for Andrew, who will be here in three, two, one. Who is, wait, he looks familiar. Yes, your path has crossed and that was no accident. It was all part of my plan. Just turn around. Hey, happy holidays. Depends on who you ask. Wait, don't I know you? Don't you work for Global Diagnostics? I do. I work in the HR department. <laughs> yeah, I work in IT. That's where I see you. <laughs> I knew you looked familiar. Yeah. I'm just here to pick up my mobile order of peppermint mocha with a shot of espresso. I just happen to have one right here, an extra one. Um, sure, thanks. Sure. Um, yeah, I gotta go sit down. I gotta go get some work done. Um, can I join you? I'm in a relationship. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> so am I. It's not that kind of party. I just wanted to sit and hear your story about why you don't have the joy of the season like everybody else does during this time. I mean, it's, it's complicated. I don't really want to get your spirits down right now. My spirit is great. I would love to hear your story. All right, well, I got a table it. right here. Cool. I mean, you know, the past few years have been, have been rough. I mean, you've seen it. COVID-19 has affected us all in some shape, form, or fashion. Yeah. Especially me. I mean, as a kid, I used to be filled with the holiday spirit. The day after Thanksgiving, my mom would start making these desserts, the, the, the cookies, mm -hmm. pies, and the <laughs> cakes. You know the things that top off dinner at the family gatherings. Yes. Gosh, those times were so amazing. <laughs> she was always with me. She was always on my side. I mean, she always looked out for me, mm -hmm. took care of me, and helped me in my time of tragedy. I mean, she was my saint. <laughs> she yeah. saved me, you know? But two years ago, she passed away, and I've been lost ever since. Wow. I mean, she used to talk about this, this God she praised, and I figured, how could he be real if she out of all people was taken from my life? Wow. I'm really sorry for your loss, Andrew. I appreciate it, but I'm not looking for pity. I hear you. I hear you. Did you ever try to find out anything about this God that your mom talked about? Well... I mean, just like most people, I went searching for a while. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it was COVID. 
Churches were closed. Yeah. I mean, people were more interested in trying to stock up on home goods and masks. And nobody was really <laughs> there for me and my pain. I hear you. I mean, but you know, that's okay. Because I figured how to do for myself. I figured, hey, I don't need anybody or anyone else to get me to where I wanted to go. And if I wanted something to happen, I had to manifest it myself. Manifest? What do you mean by manifest? Well, I mean, when my mom died, I got myself together and got back out there. I mean, my mom's friends, they would call and tell me that they were praying for me and all that, but it was me who got myself to the point where, I, where my life was okay. I mean, in this world, you got to do for yourself. If you want joy, you got to go find it yourself. Well, it might be possible that the reason things turned out for you is because your mom's friends were praying and maybe those were answered prayers, but it's okay. We'll, we'll deal with that another time. Tell me what your mom told you about Jesus. It really wasn't what she said. It was more so of how she lived her life. I mean, it was almost like she knew Jesus personally. <laughs> I mean, she used to talk about him like they were friends or something. I mean, she loved him. And she loved this time of year. I mean, in the malls, it was all about gifts, decorations, and peppermint sticks. But <laughs> in my mom's house, it was all Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful child. Oh, bro, that is a hit. I remember that song <laughs> so well. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, oh, what a wonderful child. Jesus, Mary's baby, so lonely, meek and mild. New life, new hope to all he brings. Listen to what the angels sing. Glory, glory, glory to the newborn king. Talking about Jesus, Mary's baby, so lonely, meek and mild. Talking about Jesus, Mary's baby. He was so lowly, meek and mild. New life, new hope to all he brings. Listen to what the angels sing. Glory, glory, glory to the newborn king. He was harrowed by the angels. Joseph was his earthly father. Three wise men came from afar. They were guided by a shining star to see King Jesus where he lay in the manger. Oh, they talking about Jesus, Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful child talking about Jesus. Mary's a baby, so lowly, meek and mild. New life, new hope to all he brings. Listen to what the angels sing. Glory, glory, glory to the newborn king. Singing glory, glory, glory to the newborn king. No mistake. This season in my mama's house was all about Jesus. She often described him as the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> you know, she had this one jazz Christmas album that I loved. I can't remember the name of it right now, but my favorite song on it was Silent Night. Oh, that's a good one too. <laughs>
sounds like you guys had a lot of joy in your house during this time. You know, we, we did, we, we really did. And, but I'm realizing now that I was more dependent on my mother's joy. Mm. And I don't really know the joy she had for myself. She was connected, you know? <laughs> I mean, it seemed like her and Jesus were really close and it was evident in the way she lived and definitely through the way that she loved. Yeah. I remember when I lost my job a few years before she passed away. I was devastated. I was just upset and hurting. It was actually around this time of year too. And she was just so calm. I mean, she used to tell me that we were in the expect the unexpected season. <laughs> Well, it's interesting because our pastor just finished doing a whole sermon series on that. But for us, if you think about it, Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, being born in a manger among animals in hay. I mean, who would expect someone so magnificent to come from such a lowly place by choice? So his birth for us as believers, it taught us that we can expect the unexpected. And I can only imagine how that night must have been. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he
I guess. I mean, I know my mother had a joy that seemed constant, you know? She, she always made me believe that Jesus was real. He is, Andrew. Listen, <laughs> I've only been following Jesus for a few months. And the way I came to know him was through my girl, Melissa, who encountered him at Starbucks. Starbucks. It was a whole <laughs> Jesus and caramel macchiato thing. I'll tell you about that later. All right. But I can tell you that since I have accepted him into my life, my life has changed. And I'm not talking about that spiritual woo-woo that sometimes just doesn't really make sense. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that I know that I'm loved. I know that I'm chosen. I know God has a plan for my life. And I don't have to be out here just trying to live life on my own. And I'm definitely not out here trying to manifest anything. I just live with an assurance of knowing that God has me and that I belong to him. And there's so much comfort in knowing that. Is my life perfect? Far from it. But just knowing that he's with me gives me great peace and great joy. Pause. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I'm still stuck on this Starbucks caramel macchiato yeah. thing. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Believe me, it was a whole thing. <laughs> but talk about expecting the unexpected. I know Melissa did not anticipate ex in encountering Jesus at Starbucks. But yet, here we are. Here we are in a coffee <laughs> shop too, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, and, I, and I sure didn't expect to have this conversation with with you here today mm -hmm. i mean i feel like my life is changing right now i mean i would love to experience the love joy and peace that you have and the joy that my mother had too especially around this time of year i mean she always used to tell me that jesus was the most wonderful gift of all well i can tell you as a woman who likes to shop herself that that is true he is the best gift that I could ever receive. Well, hey, I got to get back to the office, but uh, can we continue this conversation sometime later this week? Sure, sounds good to me. Right. I'll look for you around the office. That sounds good. It sounds good, it sounds good. Wait a minute, what? is that a smile that I see? <laughs> you know, honestly, for the first time in a long time, I feel hope. Wow, hey. I'm glad to hear that. Thanks, Lynn. Yeah, thank you, I'll see you soon. Jesus, <laughs> that was amazing. Thank you so much for allowing me to share my faith with Andrew. Did I do okay? You did great. You spoke your truth, you spoke in love, you shared your story. And most of all, you planted a seed of hope in Andrew's heart. Oh my God, I loved it. It was so much easier than I thought. I love you, I love this season, and I really hope that Andrew comes to know your love the way I do during this season. You did good, my child, you did good. <laughs> well done. Thanks, Jesus. <laughs> Good morning, family, and Merry Christmas. I know you've been sitting for a little while, so I want to invite you just to take a stand for a moment and uh, just stretch your legs and join me just in a round of appreciation and praise to God for our wonderful creative arts team, our musicians, our choir, our, our camera people. Um, our entire team has just worked so hard to put this together today, and they've done such a wonderful job, a true gift to our family, amen, amen, you may be seated. You know, it is so exciting when we share the story of Jesus and it connects with someone's heart. I think sometimes in the climate of our culture today, we assume that people don't wanna hear about Jesus. We can be reticent. But I believe if we take the risk like Lynn, and we follow Jesus's promptings and simply listen and share our Jesus story, we can be unexpectedly surprised at how receptive people really can be, especially when Jesus has already been stirring in their hearts. Now, I would love to hear the rest of Andrew's story to see how he continues to nurture the seed of hope that Lynn planted today 
And I suspect that this would be the beginning of many stories. Our, our journey with Jesus is just that. It's a journey. And Jesus is there walking with us every step of the way. Well, Lynn and Andrew both had an unexpected Jesus encounter today. And, and that's just like Jesus. From his unexpected birth to his unexpected death and resurrection, Jesus is all about touching our lives with his love, often when we least expect it. He's always inviting us to draw closer to him as Emmanuel, God with us. That closeness is, is what I think Andrew witnessed in his mother. And it's actually what he is seeking, even if he isn't quite aware of that. I love that line in the story when he says, I'm realizing now that I was dependent on my mother's joy. I don't know that joy for myself. She and Jesus were very close, he says. And family, that's exactly why Jesus came, to offer that joy to get, to get close to us. Even as a baby, Jesus was fully God, but in the flesh, he was also fully human. And he came to be with us, to be among us, to, to be around us, to be one of us, so to speak, to be up close and personal with us, the spiritual family that God had in mind from the very beginning. We see this in the relationship between Lynn and Jesus, too, as an example. They're the closeness that they share. It's the same closeness that Jesus offers each and every one of us. Sisters and brothers, we are so used to watching shows and movies that it's tempting to, to, to switch our brains into that mindset, even when we're watching a live action story like we saw today. But I want to suggest this morning that God uses all kinds of, of venues to, to speak to us. So the skit presented was so much more than a play. It's, it's another opportunity for God to speak to your heart and to my heart, for God to, to get up close and personal. So I wonder, my friends, what he may be saying to you today. I wonder if he is inviting you, like Lynn, to, to share your truth, not just abstract faith talk, but, but sharing the person of Jesus. Think of it like introducing one friend to another friend because you know that they would get along so well. Perhaps there is someone that, that Jesus has already planted in your mind. Someone Jesus is saying to you, introduce us. I want to get to know him or her just like I know you. Perhaps Jesus even now is whispering in your ear, tell them about me. Tell them about the wonderful relationship we share so I can share that relationship with them, too. Or maybe you relate more to Andrew. You kind of know God, but, but something is missing in the relationship. Maybe it feels distant or there's no joy or maybe it's cold over the years. Or maybe it's dawning on you that, that you never really established your own relationship with Jesus. It's been a, a secondhand one through someone else. Jesus is saying to you, that's a good start, but I want my own relationship with you. I want you to know me for yourself. Family, I don't know what God is saying to you today, but my word of encouragement is to listen. Consider the invitation that, that Jesus may be offering you today because he is so much closer than you think. He came to earth so that we could be close to him too. So friends, as we prepare to bring our Christmas service to a close today, and you prepare for all the things that you have on, in store this afternoon, my prayer is that you will find some time today 
in the midst of all the festivities to simply listen for Jesus's voice because he is here and he is near and he wants to get closer to you even today because the truth is there is no Christmas without Jesus. Christmas without Jesus and thank you so much ensemble for that that wonderful selection to remind us of that truth and I want to say as we prepare to leave that if you made a decision to draw closer to Jesus today I would love to know about that I would love to to partner with you in that journey and I and I invite you just to drop me an email and I will respond to you personally 
because there is nothing better than walking with Jesus. Also want to let you know that if there is a prayer request on your heart, we have an amazing prayer team on our website. There's a place where you can request, uh, make a prayer request, and we will keep it confidential. And we pray for every single prayer request that comes to us. So I invite you, if something's on your heart, just click that button and we'll begin praying for you. If you are visiting with us for the first time, we love new friends. And on our website also, SOBCC.org, there is a place where you can click and it says, I'm new. We would love to get to know you. We have a special gift for you. And we would love to invite you to, to let us partner with you on your journey, wherever you are on your journey. We have resources and friends and ways that we want to come alongside and, and walk with you. And lastly, if you have been blessed by the service today and, and you're feeling a sense in your spirit that you would like to, to contribute and support the work of the kingdom, you can also do that at our website. And there is a, a giving tab, and it'll walk you through exactly what to do. But the point is that Jesus came so that we could have that relationship with God up close and personal and then go and share the joy, share the good news. It is way too exciting for us to keep to ourselves. Amen. Amen. Please join me as we close today with our benediction. Heavenly Father, Son of God, Prince of Peace, as we go today, May we be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, and the peace of the Christ child. May you fill us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, with your love and your joy, and continue to bless us now and forevermore. And let the whole church say, wherever you are, amen, amen, and amen. Please join us with one more selection from our wonderful band. God bless you, and Merry Christmas.